Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a spigot server in Minecraft 1.14.4. Spigot will later run plugins on your server, but run them a bit more efficiently than a bucket or craft bucket server. Let's say you have a larger server with more players on it. Spigot's the way to go, and actually paper is probably the best thing for you, but I'm going to be showing you how to make a spigot server today, and if spigot doesn't fix your problems, paper will be the best option for you, and we've got a video coming up on how to make a paper server very, very soon. First and foremost, though, I do want to say that this is not a 24-hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. It's also going to be hosted on your own IP address, which means that if someone joins this or gets the IP address to this server and you don't trust them, they're angry at you, something like that, they can hit you offline with the DDoS attack. They can also figure out where you live, even down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, all from the IP address of this server. So on top of all of that, it's running on your own computer, meaning it's using your own computer's resources. So if you can barely play Minecraft as it is, you're not going to be able to play Minecraft and run a Minecraft server at the same time. It's just not going to happen. So with that, I have a solution for you, and that solution is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, to get an incredible 24-hour DDoS victim Minecraft server running spigot, all set up in just one click, and on top of that, using Apex Minecraft Hosting's hardware, using Apex's IP address. You don't have to worry about it. You can give the Apex Minecraft Hosting IP address out to anybody and everybody because, well, I mean, it's not your IP address, and it's set up to have public servers, like our server, play.breakdowncraft.com, which you can check out the information for in the description down below that is all hosted on apex minecraft hosting so again you can check out apex the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex to get an incredible 24-hour minecraft server running spigot and 1.14.4 nevertheless let's go ahead and jump right on into this the first thing you're going to need to go do is go to the second link in the description down below and once you're here you're going to find this version 1.14.4 of spigot right so once you're here click on this yellow download button right here and then it will take us off to the page where we can actually click the download button. As you can see, it now says you're about to download spigot 1.14.jar. You want to click on spigot 1.14.jar here. Once you click on that, it will go ahead and download in the bottom left, right, like so. And then it's going to ask you if you want to keep the file. As long as it has spigot in it and ends in .jar, you're safe to keep the file. If you're on Mozilla Firefox, it's popped up in the center of your screen. You again want to save the file as long as it has spigot and .jar in it. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And on our desktop here, we have spigot 1.14.4.jar. We're going to go ahead and create a new folder so we can right click, create a new folder. Now you can name this folder whatever you want, but I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I doing that? Because that's our server. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the best Minecraft server in the multiverse with custom Greed protected survival and incredible custom skyblocks. So come play with us over 300 players online every single day. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and take spigot 1.14.jar and drag it in to our newly created folder here. Now if we go ahead and open up our newly created folder. We'll have spigot 1.14.jar in it. And then we want to right click in here. We want to create a new text document. So then it'll create a text document called new text document. Go ahead and double click on your new text document and then go to the description of this video and find these codes. Basically all of these codes are how much RAM you want your server to have. Two gigabytes, three gigabytes, four gigabytes, etc. I'm going to go ahead and give our server four gigabytes of RAM. You could start with two and work your way up, whatever you want to do. And as a matter of fact, we actually have a video at the eye at the top of your screen on how much RAM you even need for your Minecraft server. So that video will help you determine how much exactly you need. If you need more than four gigabytes of RAM, by the way, right here you can change it. It's 4,096 megabytes, which is four gigabytes of RAM. If you wanted to do, for example, five gigabytes of RAM, you would go ahead and type in like 5,100 something, and that would be five gigabytes of RAM there. So now once you've added this to your new text document, click on File, Save As, and then it's going to open up this. Now, the key thing in this here is that you want to name this file run.bat. So it's very important that you do run period bat. So run.bat right there. And then for save type as, you want to save that as all files, right? So save type as all files, file name run.bat. Now when you go ahead and click save, you can close out of the, the notepad document there and you have a run.bat file. It should have like two gears next to it. Now we can go ahead and delete the new text document we download or we created there. And we should only have the run.bat file and spigot 114.jar in our folder. Now if we go ahead and double click on the run.bat file, it should go ahead and open up. It should work, right? Now it might say this build is outdated and we'll take 20 seconds. If that says that, that's perfectly fine. It will catch up and, and work perfectly fine in a bit. 
but after 20 seconds it'll start running is what I'm saying. However, this time it will fail. Now, what if that didn't even work? What if it came up and said, you can't open it or a, a object heap is wrong or something like that? What happens if that's the case? Well, we have a solution for you. As you can see, it's starting here, but it did fail because we need to agree to the EULA. We'll do that in a second. What if you can't even get to the EULA? Well, we have a solution. In the description we have how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. This is going to show you all the things you need to do in order to get Java installed to run your spigot server on your computer. Now, if you're still having issues, we have the jar fix so if you go through and and do the Java tutorial and then it's still not working you can come here and run the jar fix in order to get everything repaired and working correctly on your computer and get your jar files working with Java again so once you've done that we can finally double click on that run.bat file and then fail out to the EULA. Now, once you have this EULA.txt here, right, once you've got it, we need to agree to the EULA. And to do that, go ahead and double click on the EULA.txt. And then in this notepad document, you have this EULA here. Go to this EULA, and if you agree to it, come back and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T R U E, right like that. And then go ahead and do file, save, and now it'll agree to the EULA and we'll be good. Now, we're actually starting our server over here, so it's actually going to start on up because I saved that before it had started starting the server. But at this point, if it had failed, if your server had failed, all you would want to do is double click on the run.bat file to get the server up and running again. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That is how you can get your server up and running. But at this point, your server's up and running, but your friends can't join it. You can't join it except off your local IP address. So um, how, do we, how do we allow your friends to join your server? Well, to do that, we're going to need to port forward. And as we can see, we're preparing spawn area. The server started up. If we go ahead and stop here, we'll be able to restart the server yet again. Just I just want to prove to you that you know we agreed to the EULA there and it did work. So yeah, kind of weird, I know, but it's just something I want to do. But nevertheless, we can now port forward. How do we port forward? Well, it's actually not too difficult of a process, so let's go ahead and go through it. We've helped millions of people port forward, and we can help you port forward as well. I'm very confident in that. However, if you just don't want to deal with the hassle of port forwarding and logging into your router and all of that stuff, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the perfect way to start a server without having to port forward. On Apex, all you do is get an IP address and join it in Minecraft. You can add plugins to it. You can do all of that stuff, but you don't have to worry about port forwarding. They take care of all of that for you on their own servers. So nevertheless, as you can see, we are starting the server everything is working correctly and yeah basically it's all good there so now let's go ahead and stop the server whenever it's all set up as you can see it says done there we can type stop stop the server and it will go ahead and shut it down and then we'll be able to press any key to continue to close that out now let's port forward to do that click the top left button for me the bottom left of your screen that little windows icon in the bottom left of your screen click on that and type in cmd right like this then you'll have the command prompt here. So go ahead and click on the command prompt and it will open up something that looks exactly like our server console. That's because our server console basically runs in command prompt. But nevertheless, once you're here, you wanna type in IPCONFIG. IP config exactly like that and hit enter. It will then go ahead and open up tons of different information and uh, it's gonna be overwhelming. But guess what? It's perfectly fine because we just need two sets of numbers from here. The first one we need is our IPv4 address. This is your local uh, IP address that I keep talking about. So if you want, you can take your local IP address into Minecraft, type it in, and join your Minecraft server right now, right? So if you wanna go join your Minecraft server, you can do that right now without port forwarding, as long as the server is started and you join off your local IP address, but your friends won't be able to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy over our local IPv4 address here, and that's going to be for me, 192.168.1 dot one two three yours could be completely different and that's perfectly fine as it if it is and then we also need our default gateway now there are two default gateways here one that's very overwhelming and that's going to be the ipv6 default gateway which is fe80 9610 all that don't worry about that you don't need that one that's not the one you want you want the simple one the one that's just numbers 192.168.1.1 now if you have two ipv or default gateways there and they're both numbers. So for example, you might have one that's like 10.10.1.1 and 192.168.1.1. That's perfectly fine. You just want to go with the one that is the same as your IPv4 address. So if your IPv4 address starts with 192.168, then go with the default gateway that starts with 192.168. Nevertheless, once you've got that copied over, just the number, as you can see, 192.168.1.1, that's what mine is. Whatever yours is, it could be completely different, but copy it over there. Now we can go ahead and close out a command prompt. What we want to do next is go back over to our Minecraft server here, and then you have a server.properties file. You see that? Server.properties. When you double click on it, you may have to select to open it with Notepad, but go ahead and open it with Notepad. And then once you're in here, you want to go ahead and find your server-ip, which is right there. Go ahead and next to server-ip, put in your IPv4 address, which in my case is 192.168.1.1, right like so. 
Now go ahead and click File, Save to save your IPv4 address or your server IP in the server properties there and close out of the server properties. Now we can go ahead and open up our browser and get to port forwarding. And so the first thing you want to do is create a brand new tab in your browser. And right up here where you would normally type in, you know, breakdowncraft.com, for example, or youtube.com or something like that, what you want to do is type in your default gateway. So if we come back over to our handy notepad document here, we can see that my default gateway is 192.168.1.1. I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. When I do and when you do, you'll get a login box of some sort, but most likely it'll be designed and look completely different from the login box that's here. The reason for that is because every router is different. Every router has different software, has different setups and things like that. And that's why we have an in-depth tutorial that will help you port forward your router. Now, the first thing though, you need to actually log into your router. And as you can see, I've already got my login information there. I can just click sign in and it logs right on in. However, what if you don't? Well, we have an in-depth article linked in the description down below on how to find your router's password. This goes through everything you need to know to find your router's password and get everything set up and working. As you can see, it gives you five different methods to finding your router's password. Most people find their router's password by method four, if not by method three, it's usually up and working and they have logged into their router. Now, again, once you log into your router, you found your router's password here and you log into your router, what do you do, right? From this point, what do you do? Well, you're most likely on a completely different screen than I'm on, and that's perfectly okay. I'm gonna give you all sorts of different terms and places and things that you can look for in your router. But more importantly than that, we have an in-depth tutorial linked in the description down below on how to port forward. Now, what's great about this is not the tutorial down here. That's not what's, what's great. Like That doesn't matter much. What matters is this video. This video goes through all of the top routers on the market, from Cisco to Netgear to Linksys, all of it is covered, AT&T, Verizon, they're all covered in this video right here. Now, even if your router isn't listed, watch this video, watch every minute of it. And the reason that I say that is because most routers use similar software to other routers. Cisco makes most of the router software out there, right? And so because of that, most likely you have a router software that's very similar to one of those in there that's going to at least give you the right terms to look for in your specific router. Nevertheless, once you've done that, we can go ahead and come back over to our router and get to port forwarding. Now for me, it is in security. For you, it may be in advanced. It may be in advanced advanced. It may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It may be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It may be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It may be in administration. It may be in system administration. It may be in system. It may be in apps and gaming. Again, for me, it is in security. Then it's in apps and gaming. What did I say? That's one place it could be. Then for me, it's in single port forwarding. For you, it might be port forwarding slash port triggering. It might just be called port forwarding. It might just be called forwarding, right? But when you find it, you'll know you found it because it'll have things like a port one or port two or external port and internal port or inside port and outside port. It'll also have a place for an IP address or it'll have a list of devices that are currently connected to your network. It'll have a protocol of some sort and you'll be able to give it some sort of a name. So if I go ahead and click add new single port forward here for our name or the ID, we're just going to name it Minecraft because this is just to know what this port forward is for. Now for anything mentioning port, if it says the word port at all, Right? If it says the word port at all, you're going to put 25565 in there. So that says the word port, external port, we're putting 25565. Internal port, guess what? Says the word port, we're putting 25565 in there. Now, for our protocol, that is going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. If you don't have both, just do the port forward twice. One for TCP and then one for UDP, right? Like so. Now, once you've done that, and by the way, if you have both, just select both protocols. And then once you've done that, you have your device IP. Now you may also have a list of devices connected to your network. And if you do, go ahead and select your computer that you're starting the server on. If you don't, your device IP is your IPv4 address. See, there's many reasons. In many ways, you can use your IPv4 address. So in my case, it's 192.168.1.123. So let's go ahead and copy that over here, 1.1.123. And then we go ahead and click Save. Now we go ahead and click Apply and click OK. Our port forward is done. However, you may have an external IP or an outside IP. Now, if you have an internal IP, that is your IPv4 address that we just got. But if you have an external IP, that is going to be your public IP address. Luckily for all of us, we all need our public IP address because that is how your friends are going to join your Minecraft server. So you can go to the description down below and find whatsmyip.com. And there's a lot of black boxes on your screen. All you can see is the last three digits of my IP address, which is 176 here. Now. Everything else is blacked out because again, you don't wanna give your IP address out publicly. It's not something you wanna do because people can DDoS you, they can take you offline, they can find out where you live. As you can see, you can see all the information you can get over here on the right-hand side. 
your city, your state, your region, your country, your zip code, your latitude, longitude coordinates. It's all able to be gotten from your IPv4 or your public IP address, and that's why it's very, very important that you keep it private. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and copy my public IP address, where you can only see the last three digits, so you know I'm going to be using the same one in Minecraft. And then if you needed this for your port forward, come over here and paste it in. But now we can minimize our browser. We want to go ahead and start up our Minecraft server with a run.bat file there. As you can see, that is now starting on up, and we're going to go ahead and open up Minecraft so we can join the server. So boom, open up Minecraft here. I'm going to play 1.14, latest release. As you can see, latest release 1.14.4, and click play. Minecraft is now opening right on up, and our server is now starting right on up on the other side here. I'm going to move Minecraft to where we can see it better, as you can see right there. Now, when everything is loaded on up here, we'll be able to uh, join the server as soon as it started. So let's go ahead and click on multiplayer, and then we can click direct connect. But wait, what is that? Play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. We have custom survival, custom skyblock, medieval survival is our player-based survival server. It is absolutely incredible, and we absolutely love it. But here we are on the multiplayer screen. We can go ahead and direct connect to our public IP address. So if I go ahead and paste that in there, you can see the last three digits are 176, so it's the same one we used earlier. And then we can go ahead and click Join Server. It'll then connect us right on into our server, getting everything running. And as you can see, we are now connected on in down here. Loading in terrain, and then we'll be online. Boom, here we are. We are on our server. Look at that. It's absolutely beautiful, actually. Reminds me of uh, 113, actually, with how beautiful this, like, these, these oceans are. The coral reef here. What seed is this? Everybody always wants to know the seed. So this is actually a perfect time for me to show you how to op yourself. So come over here to your server console, type OP, and then your username. This is going to allow you to do things like slash key game mode creative and all that stuff, but also slash seed, and then there's the seed. You might have to zoom in to see it. It's also, uh, I can think I can run it over here as well. Yeah, there's the seed for you, and you'll be able to uh, to get that, and if you want to spawn into this world, this actually looks like a really, really cool world. But nonetheless, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Now, if you do have any issues with getting your friends onto the server, let's say you can't join via your public IP address. If you can't, that's perfectly fine. Just go ahead and join using your local IPv4 address that we got earlier, right? So go ahead, join via that local IPv4 address, and then you'll be good. All you need is your friends to join off of the public IP. You can join off your local IP. Now, if your friends can't join off your local IP, then you need to make sure that there's a firewall not blocking it. For example, it could be Windows Defender is blocking the like the connection, or or it could be something completely different. For example, it could be a firewall on your router blocking the connection. Usually it's Windows Defender, but then after that, it could be your router's firewall blocking the port forward. But yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know to get your server up and running on Spigot. Now, you probably want to add some plugins to this server, and if you do, well, I completely understand, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in the next video, which you can check out your screen right now. Popped up as a little end card there. You can go and check out that video. It's also at the eye at the top of your screen, how to add plugins to your Spigot server in Minecraft 1.14.4. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, and I am out. Peace.